Today I want to talk about perfectionism. We're hiring new people here because it's gotten busier. And one of the most common answers to my job interview question of what sets you apart from everybody else in the stack of resumes here is I am a perfectionist. Everybody's a self-proclaimed perfectionist. And I want to talk about why that doesn't really impress me and why I don't care. Perfectionists are often cowards. They're people who will not do something if it is not perfect. It's not that, oh, well, I am a perfectionist. I want everything to be perfect. That makes me better. That, you know, means that I have higher standards and blah, blah, blah. Rather, to me, when I look at a perfectionist, that's somebody who lacks the balls or the character to say, this is only good enough. I am going to keep it good enough, even though, I'm a, even though I want it to be perfect. This, I'm going to keep this good enough so I don't fuck it up further. And there's a saying that Bob Olson had, who he's a genius mastering engineer in the music industry, which is, in the pursuit of removing everything that's bad, you also remove everything that's good. And he's talking about these artists that will listen to a take a million times and edit out all the little mistakes and redo them. And while they're editing out these tiny little mistakes that nobody would ever hear, he, they're also taking away everything that made the take captivating emotionally to the listener. And you know, Shallow uh, Crow's Tuesday Night Music Club, for example, uh, the second to last song on the album, like half of it's out of tune, but it sold millions and millions of copies. Nobody goes, uh, when Cheryl Crow sang, downstairs they're singing, da da nobody gives a fuck that that's out of tune because it's an emotionally captivating song and it's a good album. Nobody cares that it's not perfect. And she understood that in the pursuit of most likely removing every little thing that is perfect, that she's also going to remove everything that makes that an awesome album. And it's the same thing in every other aspect of your life. One example that I'm using that's on the extreme end, but a good one, is the new MacBook Air, with the numerous layers where if you even so much as touch it, you will never, ever, ever clean the remnants of your skin oils off of it or your scratches off of it. I tell people if you're doing this in your home, if you see a tiny, tiny bit of, uh, of junk in there, just a tiny, tiny bit, just fucking live with it. Because if you don't have the tools to deal with it properly, you're just going to fuck this shit up further and nobody ever listens. It's a tiny, tiny thing in the corner and they try to get rid of it. But then they use their fingernail, which leaves a scratch. Then they try to get the scratch off of that first layer, but then they actually leave a fingerprint or get dust on the second layer. Now while they're trying to get rid of the crap on the second layer, they've got an even bigger mark in the first layer. So instead of having this thing that's this, this small all the way in the corner that nobody on God's green earth will ever bitch about unless they're insane, you now have marks that even my grandma without her glasses would say, why is this on my screen? Being a perfectionist is not always the best thing. I like to think of myself as a perfectionist. I like to think of myself as somebody who wants to make things perfect. But through time, experience, and knowledge, I've learned that there are many, many times where in the pursuit of perfectionism, I am going to fuck everything up. And that What's important is not making this one little detail perfect, but rather making as many details as I can perfect on this entire pile of shit that I have to go through every fucking day. And the way I do that is by telling myself when I need to leave well enough alone. And you may think that this is a cop-out for work that's not good, but if you put an iPad that gets done here next to an iPad, that gets done somewhere else, 99% of the time, you will see an iPad that looks like it came out of the box at an Apple store, and an iPad with a couple of smudges, maybe a little bit of dust, and the former is always going to be ours. But because while we care about perfectionism, we know when good enough is good enough, and we know that there is a point of diminishing returns where attempting to make something this perfect will actually mean you are failing and starting to make it into a complete clusterfuck nightmare and disaster. I don't want to hire a technician that spends three to six to nine hours trying to make one little detail that nobody will ever fucking notice perfect at the expense of the other 30 tickets that came in today, or even at the expense of something else with this same machine. I want to hire somebody who knows through common sense, knowledge, experience, and self-control that this is where I am. This is where I need to be. I am here. I need to be here. I'm already above where I need to be. I am going to move on. And this is a, an important concept that, I, that I, th I think is worth discussing. And it's not just for this field, it's for any, any, it can be applied to anything, not just the repair, it can be applied to how you start your business. If you're the kind of person that says, I don't have my license perfectly in order yet, I haven't uh, found the retail space yet, I don't know how to advertise perfectly yet, I have to pick a class and how to run a business, I'm not ready. 
that you are a perfectionist who is never going to get anything done. You have to realize when your perfectionism is actually keeping you from doing anything at all and keep yourself from uh, being your own worst enemy. You don't want to be like Axl Rose and have it take you over 14 years to make a goddamn album. My parents forgot that he existed. My dad got married, had a kid, bought a house, uh, got, you know, got separated, and moved away in the amount of time that it took Axl Rose to create a new fucking album. And the world forgot that he existed in this time frame. Don't, don't, I love Guns N' Roses, I do. Uh, November Rain, the solo at 9 minutes and 30 seconds, and it's, it's all good shit, but don't be like Axl Rose. Don't take 16 years to create your album. Don't take 16 years to um, start your business. Don't take 15 or 16 years to get the, this little bit of dust out of the iPad. Get it to be as good as it could possibly be. Realize that that is where you are. Try to do better next time, and move the fuck on. You can always try to do better on the next job with the information you learn from this one. But if you're capable of doing this, and you've done this, don't try to do this and then wind up over here because you're not ready. Do this. Do the best job you're capable of at the time. And try to learn everything you can from that job so that you do a better job next time. But don't try to achieve absolute perfection when you know goddamn well that you are unable to achieve that type of perfection. Because in the pursuit of that perfection, you're going to fuck everything up.